Hey, what's going on all you Starfinders out there? I'm Dave, the Digital Dungeon Master, and in this particular video, we are going to be taking a look at the Xenoseeker theme in the Starfinder Core Rulebook. So the great thing about Starfinder is that there's no restrictions on any of the class, race, and theme combinations that you want to play. So take advantage of that, and if you want to play something crazy like a Vesk Soldier Xenoseeker, go for it. You're not restricted in any way. Okay, so once you get your theme, your race, and your class chosen, think of a good background story that you can give your character. Now, you're a Xeno Seeker. This is where you go out and you seek and you look for new alien life forms. A couple of good ideas for background stories would be, how long have you been interested in searching for these new alien life forms? Maybe as a youngster, you were saved by an alien form that you had never seen before. Maybe you were captured by some alien form you've never seen, and you were a prisoner. Maybe you escaped. Do you seek out new life forms, and do you work for an organization or maybe the Starfinder Society? Or do you do private work to seek out new alien life forms for colleges and universities to where they do experiments on these? So you can see that there's quite a few possibilities for ideas for a background story for your Xeno Seeker. Now, I highly recommend you doing this for your character because when you do, your background story is gonna give your game master more food or more fuel for his or her game. Now, every theme in Starfinder is going to get four extraordinary theme features. You'll get these features at level one, six, 12, and 18. So at level one, you are going to get theme knowledge. This is where you are trained to seek out identify and interact with new alien life forms. First, you're going to get a permanent plus one bonus to your charisma ability score. Now just remember in character creation not to go over 18. Second, you are going to be able to choose life science as a class skill. Now, if you've already got a class that has life science as a class skill, then you can go ahead and give yourself a plus one permanent bonus to any kind of life skill skill check. Lastly, you will be able to reduce the DC by five to identify any kind of rare creature whenever you are using your life science skill check. So if you have a DC of a 20, your level one theme knowledge will reduce that 20 DC down to a 15 DC, making the skill check much more manageable to be successful with. Now next at level six, you are going to get Quick Pigeon. This is where you attempt to communicate with new alien life forms that you've never ever interacted with before. And I really think Quick Pigeon is going to be a great way to incorporate role play into your game. Now, if you've encountered a creature and you've never seen it before and you don't know how to communicate with this alien creature, you can try to spend 10 minutes trying to converse and interact, maybe with some type of uh, hand gestures, uh, something with your mouth, clicks, and you can spend 10 minutes doing this. Now, when you do this, the creature has to be willing to do the same thing with you. So it has to work both ways. And if both sides are willing to try to converse with one another, then you will go ahead and need to do a DC 25 culture check. Now, I know that seems pretty high, but then again, you don't know how to converse with this alien creature that's in front of you. So if you are successful with this DC 25 culture check, then this gives you and the creature simple understandings of how to communicate with each other. So that's actually pretty nice. And like I said, it will incorporate a fair amount of role play into your game. I don't know how often you're gonna be able to use this, but I would definitely have fun using it. Now, the next thing that you can do with Quick Pigeon is if there's a similar creature, maybe in an area that you're exploring or in a world, now that you're successful with one, anytime that you interact with a similar type of creature, now you can get a plus two to your culture check as well, plus all of your other bonuses. So quick pigeon, keep it on the back burner, and you may get to use it from time to time. Next, at level 12, you are going to get first contact. This is where you know how to make a very good first impression to any new alien races that you've never encountered before. Now, the way this feature works is like this. 
Whenever you meet an alien race that you've never met before, that alien race has never had to meet any one of your kind before. And if you have party members with you, that alien race that you're interacting with cannot have met any other alien races to him or her in your party as well. And that creature or that alien race that you've met has to have the attitude of unfriendly towards you. Now, whenever this happens, you will have a lasting good impression on that creature. And then that creature or that new alien life form, his attitude will be bumped up to indifferent instead. Now, attitudes are a big thing in Starfinder. So I really recommend you going to the Starfinder core rulebook and checking out pages 139 and 140 to get yourself familiar with the attitude changes because the attitudes of the creatures that you're interacting with are going to give you modifiers, either positive or negative, on the DC of the skill check. And then lastly, first contact will not work with any creature that has a starting attitude towards you of hostile, indifferent, friendly, or helpful. So it has to be unfriendly for first contact to work. And last, at level 18, you are going to get brilliant discovery. This is where you become invigorated anytime that you discover a new species of flora or fauna. So the way that this feature works is that if you are on an unexplored planet, and you spend at least 10 minutes trying to identify and discover a new flora or fauna, you will be revigorated and you will get one resolve point back. Now you can do this twice a day to get back a total of two points. Also, now if you're on a explored planet already that is already inhabited, then you can take 1d4 days to discover a new flora or fauna. Now, the last thing you need to take into consideration with Brilliant Discovery is that to benefit from this, to get the resolve point, you will not be able to get that resolve point during a short break for the stamina recharge. So you need to be wary of that. So there we are, everybody. That is the Zeno Seeker theme in the Starfinder Core Rulebook. Let me know down in the comments section below what you guys think of this theme. Do you like it or do you not like it? Also, if you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope you did, please do me a huge favor and give me a thumbs up. I would greatly appreciate it. And you can check out all of my other D&D 5e, Starfinder, and Fantasy Grounds videos here on my YouTube channel. Once again, everybody, my name is David, the Digital Dungeon Master. And until next time, happy gaming and stay safe.